Hello, my name is Erlene Paget. I've been a teacher for over 20 years, and I'd like to introduce you today to some brushes that I've used and have great success with in my classes. It's the Ruby Satin Brush by, made by Silver Brush Limited. As an artist, I understand that my most important tool is my brush. And as a teacher, I see students struggle all the time when they use the wrong brush for the wrong medium or wrong technique. It is important that we choose the right brush for the project that we're doing. Ruby Satin works equally well for oils or acrylics. Today, I'm going to show you a simple background that I've just started here uh, in oils and I'd like you to see uh, how wonderfully this brush performs. It's very firm, it has a wonderful snap, it blends colors very easily and presses the paint into rougher surfaces such as canvas and tins and woods, other surfaces. So. Uh, it's a very good brush for our artists and craftsmen. It comes in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. So I'm going to quickly blend, blend this background a little bit using uh, the large bright from Silver Brush. Then I might switch to um, a mop and lightly mop this and get a nice dark background. I like dark backgrounds behind my flowers that I like to paint and teach. And so we'll mop. And then I'd like to show you a couple of quick leaves. Of course, these brushes come in all the standard shapes and sizes. It comes in a very nice angle. It comes in long handle and short handle. I like to use a lot of the shapes and sizes in the short handle. Uh, I can do some very quick leaves using an angle brush with this. And I can do this by loading with the background color, in this case a dark green, and then getting a slightly lighter value and by simply pulling, flip, pull, flip, come to the other side, pull, flip, pull, flip, I can immediately draw in a stem. And you see how this brush pops right back to its chisel edge. Excellent brush. Uh, I could pick up a, just a tint color. Let's say I was painting pink flowers. I could pick up a little of the flower color, come back, and immediately tint my leaf. And this stays in the background nicely in a floral bouquet of flowers. This is the angle. It's still in the ruby satin line. Another fun leaf that you can do, because all of us hate doing the hundred leaves that we have to do in a floral background. So if you load, this is a dagger striper. And if you load again with a dark color, and then I, this time I could just slice through a tint. And if I lay the brush, the dagger, on its side, press, and just wiggle it a little bit, lift, and pull, it makes a really quick leaf for little wildflower leaves. Just press them in very quickly. Um, another, um, of course the dagger wasn't invented to do press and lift leaves. It was invented for line work. Let me get a light value here that you can see some line work. It was invented for line work and it makes wonderful lines and uh, again pops right back to its chisel edge so I can immediately put in the stem to a leaf. So very responsive brush, you'll love it. Another fun brush that I've used is um, the triangle and the triangle is unusual. It um, has a triangle shaped ferrule but it's full. And when I'm doing a bouquet of flowers, I usually have a rose poppy, something large for a center of interest, but then I need to put other flowers in the background. If I just load this triangle with a variety of colors, whatever I have on my palette, let's get something light so it'll show up. I can simply 
press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, press and lift, and make a cluster of flowers very quickly using the triangle. I live in the south, so I paint a lot of wisteria, uh, a lot of flowers that are clusters like this. And so it does it very quickly, fills up the background in my flowers, and then you can focus on the center of interest. You could come back with that dagger that I just showed you and put in the stems to these flowers. See how quickly it puts in the stems? because it holds such a wonderful chisel edge. Uh, I have enjoyed sharing all of these brushes with you. They come in a wide range of shapes and sizes. The long handle, if you prefer painting at an easel. The short handle, if you prefer painting up close. I use both, even though I paint at an easel, because again, I like the shapes and sizes that the short handle offers me. There's a wonderful grass comb, and I'm just going to use it with a lighter value here so it shows up. But the grass comb is wonderful for painting beards, hair, animal fur, grasses. And if you're painting hair, I love it because it's just, it's just like combing your hair. It's a filbert shape, so you don't get uh, ends that you don't want and it works wonderfully. I use it also for texturing in flowers, like veining in flower petal leaves and, and um, uh, textures that I might want within my flowers and my florals. So that's sharing a few of the unusual shapes and sizes that maybe you haven't tried before, and I hope you will try them. All of them are exceptionally uh, durable they hold their chisel edges, they hold their points. Extremely durable brushes, fine, fine made, fine handmade brushes. I think you'll love them. Thank you for letting me share them with you today. I hope you'll try them. Mm -hmm.